But first, a quick refresher on basic spacetime diagrams. By graphing time versus just one dimension in space, we can look at the limits of our access to the universe due to its absolute speed limit, the speed of light. With the right choice of space and time units, the speed of light becomes a diagonal line on the spacetime diagram. The area encompassed by these so-called light-like paths defines all future events or spacetime locations that we could potentially travel to or influence constrained by the cosmic speed limit. That's our forward light cone. Our past light cone defines the region of the past universe that could potentially have influenced us. Let's drop a black hole onto our spacetime diagram. It lives at x equals zero on the space axis, but exists through all the times on the graph. It has a point of infinite density, the singularity, and an event horizon a bit further out. The mass of the black hole stretches space and time so that light rays appear to crawl out of the vicinity of the event horizon before escaping to flat spacetime, no longer following 45 degree paths. Now, let's throw a monkey into the black hole. As it approaches the event horizon, its future light cone bends towards the black hole as fewer and fewer of its possible trajectories lead away. Below the event horizon, all possible trajectories lead towards the singularity. The problem with the regular space-time diagram is that the path of light and the shape of the light cone changes as space-time becomes warped. That makes it difficult to figure out what parts of the past and future universe the monkey can witness or escape to. And this is where the Penrose diagram comes in. It looks like this. It transforms the regular space-time diagram to give it two powerful features. It crunches together or compactifies the grid lines to fit infinite space-time on one graph. Very useful for black holes. It also curves the lines of constant time and constant space in what we call a conformal transformation so that light always follows a 45 degree path. That means light cones always have the same orientation everywhere. Super handy for understanding monkey trajectories. This is the Penrose diagram for flat space-time with no black holes. Same as with the regular space-time diagram. Blue vertical-ish lines represent fixed locations in one dimension of space, and red horizontal-ish lines are fixed moments in time. Now those lines get closer and closer together towards the edge of the plot to encompass more and more space-time. They're extremely finely separated at the edges, so that any tiny stretch on the graph represents vast distances and or times. The lines also converge together towards the corners so that light travels a 45 degree path everywhere on the diagram. So a light ray starting from really, really far away and coming towards us hugs the edge of the diagram and crosses an enormous number of time and space steps, only reaching us in our very distant future. Okay. Let's drop a black hole into this space-time. Nice and safely far off to the left. And because we only have one dimension of space, any motion to the left brings us closer to the black hole. Its event horizon becomes the end of the line in that direction. The future cosmic horizon on the Penrose diagram is replaced with a plunge into a black hole. The compactified grid lines there now represent the stretched space-time near the event horizon. An entirely new Penrose region represents the interior of the black hole. Weirdly, the lines of constant position and constant time switch. Space flows at greater than the speed of light inwards towards the central singularity. It becomes unidirectional flowing inexorably downwards, just as time flowed inexorably forward in the outside universe. All paths lead to the inevitable singularity. Once you're beneath the horizon, your future light cone still represents all possible paths that you could take. All of them end up at that singularity. The only way to escape back to the outside universe would be to widen your light cone by traveling faster than light. So you're out of luck. Now that we've nailed the Penrose diagram, we can use it to do some serious black hole monkey physics. Our spacefaring simian begins its journey and emits a regular light signal that we observe from a safe distance. 
As it approaches the black hole, these light rays have further and further to travel through increasingly curved space-time. And so the interval between receiving signals also increases. The progress of the this monkey episode is supported slow to by halt, the great course very plus. close to the event horizon. At the event and horizon the of the black hole, at the space and time have fundamentally changed. Never reaches us. Even professional physicists it's trying disagree to travel at the on speed what of we light expect to happen against there. a light speed cascade. But there is a powerful tool in With physics picture, we can that can give us real intuition into the true questions. nature of the event horizon. First, it's time you learned it. If the monkey remembered to fire the jetpack at the last instant before reaching the event horizon. Black holes, well, objects with densities so its high that this light region still includes the event horizon sliver of the where the escape universe. velocity reaches the speed of light. It had better be a good jetpack Nothing that falls because it's going to need to follow a escape, very long near and is light lost to the path universe away. forever. It will nonetheless While we see have experienced falling objects far less freeze time as time stands still when it emerges at the horizon. into flat space time and anything that happens below the event horizon assuming no stays packs, below the event horizon. The monkey is probably doomed That's to a graceful sanitized reverse swan dive through the event Horizon, not entirely watching the entire future history of the, the reality out of above us at that last instant. More complex, yeah, and actually, no. Even it ignoring the complications of Hawking the radiation, view of the outside or black universe is defined by growth. its past light cone. black hole that in Einstein's general of the theory of relativity will catch up to it. Purely and that gravitational, light is stuck following static, these diagonal and lines because it has to contend is a subtle with the same stretch of space time but as the monkey. We can come to a powerful no and intuitive understanding of, of the beast. Even if we could travel at the speed of light and use the same of the physicists use, use, there's no is a tool that will let us easily answer the most common questions about the monkey. We would see it suspended above the horizon as we race into meters. For example, are objects but falling it'll through the event horizon to be just a little further really ahead, physically no frozen there close to that from the point of view of the outside universe? Remember, the monkey is actually above the entire future history of the universe. Plain it only fast forward that way to us because the as long horizon. as we're outside the event horizon, and do you see no times that we can witness correspond to the, the black hole crossing that the horizon? Tool that will answer these In order questions to see that crossing, the we would diagram. have to cross the event Sometimes horizon also ourselves. Once inside the black hole, they see the monkey potential. below us. All space-time within the black hole is flowing towards the singularity faster than the speed of light, but two neighboring radial layers aren't traveling faster than light relative to each other. That means that the monkey's signal can still reach us. Although it might be more accurate to say that we catch up to the monkey's outgoing signal. But even that so-called outgoing light is still moving downwards, doomed to hit the singularity along with the monkey and our rescue mission.